So Steve, just what are your thoughts on the Ravens' recent signings and, and kind of getting four guys you know, for the price of what maybe one more expensive free agent would be? Well, obviously, uh, the headliner is Jameel. Um, right. You know, he's uh, a young guy. We think he's ascending. And uh, we're very happy to uh, to be able to bring him back for three more years. And uh, called him and wished him well yesterday. I'm very excited about it. And BA, too, you know, on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, I don't think there's any there's many 35-year-olds out there that have... Uh, uh, the, the kind of physical abilities that B.A. has and what he brings and the leadership that he brings to our special teams. Uh, he was very vocal the other day uh, when he resigned and said that some of the young kids didn't get it, didn't understand right. how important that part of the, uh, the, the uh, uh, how important that is for, for our team, that it's a third of the, the team plays and, uh, right. and, and having a guy like that in a leadership position on special teams. And then bringing in these new guys, obviously, I don't know much about them. I, uh, I know how excited Ozzy and, uh, and John and Eric are to acquire them. So, yeah, I think we shored up a, a part of our team that needed shoring up, quite frankly. Right. And, and how tough is it to see guys that you drafted, like, like Ben Grubbs and Jarrett Johnson, see those guys depart in free agency? Yeah, it's the, you know, again, I'm, I'm kind of used to it. It's, it. It happens every year, and uh, um, it's just part of the, uh, you know, it's part of uh, what we're forced to do. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, again, unlike Jameel, we had the luxury of getting Corey where he had already, as his third team, uh, got him some playoff experience, which he had never experienced. And, you know, the tough one is JJ. Somebody asked me uh, a couple years, a few years ago, uh, who's the toughest of the free agents? I said Bart Scott because he had been with us the longest of, of that crop that was leaving. And JJ, um, you know, he's, he's such a quality guy. Uh, we got to speak for a long time the other day. And, um, you know, that one's, a, that one's a tough one, you know, but... Uh, uh, he got with a good team, and you know he can continue to compete with the Chargers. Uh, and I uh, told him to spend his last year playing for us for the minimal contract. <laughs> also today. And you're, you know, obviously negotiating with Joe Flacco and Ray Rice on contract extensions, and those are going to eat up salary cap space. So how how do you keep the the Super Bowl window open when you have to re-sign your guys constantly? Well. You know, the, 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 the one constant is that we have to make sure that we're, number one, paying for ascending players, and we believe they are ascending. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, in any given $120 million salary cap, you've got some players descending and some players ascending. And so it, it never changes. That You know, the snapshot that you get is some... Uh, savvy veterans and some young ascending players and and the, what we saw in uh, uh, Tory Smith uh, and and Pitta and and uh, Ed Dixon last year you know we're gonna get a chance to see Ja Reed and Tandon Doss and uh, uh, Kruger and and, uh, and and McPhee get more snaps because of the departures of those guys so uh, as as uh, as much as I hate losing the veterans, it's something that yet comes it's like kids leaving for college. You know, it'll never be the same, but uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited to give these guys a chance to get more plays and see what they can do. Right.